My uh, game-changing moment in the early 80s, uh, I was living in a house in Northridge, California in 84, and about two in the morning my phone rang. I mean, this is really crazy. It's musicians, it happens, but a good friend of mine who's still in New York, Tim Reese, a tenor sax player, he's been with the Rolling Stones and he's got several of his own jazz records out. He was with Maynard Ferguson in 84. And he said, Brad, it's Tim here. I said, Tim, what's happening? You know, it's like eight, it's like two in the morning. He said, oh, well, hey, I just was calling you because Maynard, you know, he's been had like seven horns and three rhythm and he was changing the band to five rhythms and five horns. And he goes, you want to play percussion? I said, wow, I'd love to. I'm a huge Maynard Ferguson fan. And uh, so I felt like all of a sudden, you know, I had stepped into the jazz world, which I always wanted to be in, even though my career started in the R&B world. So this phone call at two in the morning was basically Tim Reese saying, Brad, uh, Maynard wants to add percussion. I said, really, do I need to audition? He goes, well, no, he'll just take my word. And my other friend, Ray Brinker, was also in Maynard's band. And so really between Tim Reese and Ray Brinker, they got me on the Maynard Ferguson band. and. That would have been September of 84, 1984, and basically they flew us to Michigan and we started rehearsing and did tours in 84 and 85. You know, you, you were on a bus with 10 guys doing hit and runs where you'd play the concert, get on the bus and drive to the next town. One time we had a, a ride through a snowstorm. We had to go from Blackfoot, Idaho to Miles City, Montana, but you couldn't go straight across because this massive snowstorm. So we went way south, way east and way north, 36 hours on the bus. That's just, you just never forget that. But the great thing is that you're 23 years old or 24 years old and you're, um, every night you're having to solo. You know, you're with the band but you're playing uh, really fun jazz music but you, you're, you're getting all of a sudden the pressure of every night soloing and, and as on a con and congas and bongos and timbales because and, Ray was playing drum set and so for me, it was a fantastic learning experience to have that pressure so early to come up with something interesting and hopefully fun and entertaining for the audience. And so that would be, become my early, second early 80s game-changing moment.